Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Gastromania. Today, we're going to be presenting a recipe, Otak Otak. It's one of the most iconic Malay dishes in Singapore, Malaysia and Indonesia. It's extremely spicy, savoury and aromatic at the same time. Definitely one dish you must taste at least once in your life. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for weekly recipes that will definitely not disappoint. Without further ado, let's get started. First, we will need about 150 grams of rumpa or spice mix. For a great rumpa recipe, consider checking out mine. I'll leave the link in the descriptions and on the top right hand corner of this video. Next, we will need about 4 pieces of cilantro. The cilantro has a similar aroma and taste to cilantro but a little bit milder. Some people also use kefir lime to add a citrusy flavour and that also tastes amazing. Some people also use kefir lime to add a citrusy flavour to their otak and I think that tastes amazing as well. You can consider trying that out. 250ml of coconut milk. This is essential and does not have any replacement. Next, we have about 300g of Spanish mackerel or colloquially known as batang. Another alternative is the wolf herring or si yu. The meat must be scraped off using a spoon. This is to ensure that the fibre of the fish remains intact for the texture and at the same time make it easier to mince later. Take about half of the fish meat and mince it up finely using knives. Leave the remaining half intact as we will add it whole for better texture and you can bite into the fish bits inside the otah otah later on. For the cilantro, remove the veins in the center. It is hard and it will make the otah otah fibrous if not removed. Once done, slice up the cilantro very finely. If you are using kefir lime, you will have to do the two steps I've mentioned earlier. Add about 2 thirds of the rumpa into the minced fish meat. Then, add about 100ml of coconut milk first. Mix everything evenly into a fine paste. Add 2 tablespoons of rice flour. This is for the texture of the otah otah. You can add some tapioca flour to make it slightly bouncy as well. Mix everything well. If the paste is too dry, add more coconut milk into the mixture. Then, add one fresh chicken egg. This is also for the texture and will hold everything when it's cooked. You should aim to reach a consistency like what you see in this video. Then, add the prepared sliced cilantro. Add 1 tablespoon of gula malaka to season the otak otak. Mix everything well and evenly. Blanch the banana leaves in hot water to clean it up. Before the water dries up, wipe it off with a clean cloth to prevent white dots from forming. Cut the banana leaves into 12 to 15 cm white pieces. Then add the paste into the banana leaves. It will take about 2 tablespoons of the paste to fill the leaves nicely. Fold the otah otah into thirds. Secure the banana leaves using two toothpicks like this.
Flatten the water a touch slightly so that it will cook more evenly later on. Cut off the excess banana leaves using a pair of scissors to make cooking easier. If you have pieces that are broken at the end that are not wide enough, you can also fasten two layers in all four directions using four toothpicks to prevent it from leaking. Brew the otta otta in a pan or wok for about 4 minutes per side and medium heat. Another way to cook the otta otta is to use the steaming method. For this method, ensure that the water is boiling before putting the otta otta in. Steam the otta otta for about 10 minutes before it's ready. Absolutely aromatic and has classic Malay taste. Perfect to be paired with rice or eaten with nasi lemak. Try it today! And we've come to the end of today's episode. If you like this episode, consider subscribing for more recipes. We upload one recipe a week and be sure to stay tuned for more. And I'll catch you in my next video.